for the past two months, eight weeks, Love Island has dominated your TV screens, but the reality shows also prompted conversations in the living rooms across the country between parents and teenagers, like, why are you watching that? Turn that off, stop <laughs> oogling at that girl. But it's a you can't watch that! What yes. are you doing? Well, that was me last year. Last year was all... He was 15 last year, and I'm saying, this turn that off, this is ridiculous, uh, whatever. And this year, everybody's watching it, you know. Given up. You've given it's... up. The problem is they then go and watch it at their mate's house, don't they? You know, that's the well, thing, is they it? all talk about it, and it's mm. about body image, relationships, who's fit, who's not, who's copped off, who hasn't, whatever, whatever, whatever. Now, today we've got Gabby Logan, uh, TV presenter, sports reporter extraordinaire, launching... Uh, Gabby, this is called the Teen Talk campaign. What are you, what are you trying to do? Trying to encourage those conversations that you were talking about, you know, do they open up with, with your parents, uh, with teenage children, and, and a bit younger as well, because I think preteens are kind of hitting those kind of conversations mm. about body image, about the changes that come through puberty. And the campaign, which is with Boots and Procter and Gamble, has got together to say, OK, it's not always the easiest conversation for a lot of parents to, mm. to start. Are and you talking so, like a birds and bees conversation? No, more about the changes that happen to your body and things that go on in puberty, you know, the kind of the changes in smells and the mm. amount of grease you might get in your hair or how your skin feels or how you're, you know, how are you adapting to kind of your new self as and you start And part of that is, you know, relationships yeah. as well. And yeah. fancying people and upset about them not fancying you. And, and it feels like those conversations have to happen now more than ever, unless it's just my children are getting to the age when they're starting to need them to happen. Because, you know, whether it be on soaps or on something like Love Island, so much explicit stuff is right there in your mm. living room, isn't it, than, yeah. than ever before. So, they, I look, but I don't know if that short, helps or hinders. They know more than you do. Look, you know, of my four oh, children... But they also don't aim, and I think. Yeah, but they, they do. Also... There's so much things... Stop rowing with each other. Carry uh, on. <laughs> you know what I mean? They know everything, and as you say, maybe they know nothing. They certainly knew much more... I think there's a lot more for them to, to know because there are so many ways to get that information, aren't there? You know, well, I think, it's, I think it's um... the embarrassing phrases, the adult phrases that get used now in family viewing that they then ask you about. Oh. And you have to suddenly... American movies, particularly, the mm. stuff that's supposed to be for 15-year-olds or le yeah. less than that, 12-year-olds, and they talk about... I can't even say what they talk about, but things that were really embarrass me and that it passes as humour. Are you comfortable with talking about it? I think I would be, but I've mm. never been You asked. need the teen talk guy, Amy, <laughs> yes. because this will give you lots of hints yeah. and So how is it best to do it? Should you do what I've ended up doing, which is just being completely brutally honest and explaining everything yeah, but that's with the a, idea... That's such a mum thing. <laughs> Yeah, it is. Is. Well, the idea is, is that at least when they go others. to school, they won't feel wrong-footed. Yeah, I think if you give deal in facts, that's always a good thing, isn't it? Not, you know, some kind of made-up story that they're going to find out that's not true. You know, I and think then they don't trust you ever again. Exactly. And everybody has different concerns. You know, it may be that your child is more concerned about their skin. It may be that mm. they're more worried about, why do I yeah. smell different On the skin, people? can I just make that right? My honest experience and advice is all spots are there to be squeezed, right? <laughs> oh, David! <laughs> <Absolutely. laughs> if they shouldn't be there, you squeeze them. But I bet that's not about... what the team talks about. But then. they listen no, to their mum. Ruth says, never squeeze anything. It's very satisfying, though, isn't it? <laughs> squeeze <laughs> it, get rid of it, get it out. But it's not so much about... I think, you know, it's important that they understand about cleansing and the truth as well. It doesn't make, you know, really their diet is important, obviously, to be healthy and to be strong and to be fit, but not talking to them about, you know, a certain shape or being... Being beautiful. It's more about being, you know, clean and uh, keeping your hygiene up to, you know, standard. Because yeah. your body does change and things do happen and they happen at different rates as well. It's interesting to hear them talk about, well, so and so is more advanced than me. Yeah. And, and so and so's got people too. Of course. And yeah. I think if you have these conversations earlier, I think it only leads to better mental health later as well mm. because they can come to you with other concerns and How issues. How old are your twins? They're 13. 13 oh. at the So what did what yeah. was the oh. what was the first moment when you thought? OK, I need to address this. Did they bring it to you or did you bring it to them? Yeah, they started talking about... And I could see changes happening, obviously, with their bodies. And they started talking about things and about other people and, you know, how I look different to them and am I ever going to look like that? And, you know, and so then that's a good way to start the conversation mm. and start, you know, kind of... Sometimes it's in the back of the car. You know, when you're driving home from school, that's when they seem to kind of have those thoughts mulling around their heads. Something's mm. been said or... With my son, I think him and my husband, Kenny, they talk more when they play sport together. They start playing golf together and... And he said, it's amazing, the conversation just kind of opens up in mm. that environment. I think everybody's different. And that's, you know, that's what this, this is all about. It's trying to give those hints and tips, because not everybody is as comfortable having it's those where to draw the line. 
That's what I struggle with. What things do you think, mm, they're too young to know about that? And if you do tell them, other mums are like, oh, your child's just come out with... Once they get to teenage years, though, I think pretty much, you know, most of it's out it's there, all as you out say. There. If and you it's... don't tell them, someone else Someone will. else yeah. will. Kind of rather yeah. do it in the right way. Yeah, and then it does lead to those other conversations, as you say, the birds and the bees, so, so beautifully put. Uh, yeah. So, you know, all those things that, you know, are in their heads. And you don't want them making up stuff that worries yeah. them. I mean, that was one of the most emotional things of my life when um, my daughter's mum came to me and said that she had entered into womanhood. Oh. That was really... It's a funny moment. Yeah. You're filling up now. Yeah. yeah. And that obviously makes oh. you feel emotional, and you don't want... But yeah. then you don't want them to feel that this is something that yeah. they should feel, you know, no. embarrassed about or... And, you know, I think it's they quite like it when they embarrass you a little bit, though, don't yeah. they?